Hi everyone, it's February 21st and you are here at the Chaos Weekly Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Call. I almost forgot what we were doing here. Um, let me share my screen. Here we go. I, yes, I asked this question because I have been awake since 2.30 in the morning. Yikes. So <laughs> that's why I asked it. So if you're wondering why I was answering, I was also answering some slacks at 2.30 in the morning. I don't know what I said. I, I did a bunch of stuff. I ordered a bunch from Amazon. I ordered groceries. I mean, I did stuff, but yeah, I should have been sleeping. So I will take these suggestions to heart. The more the merrier, please. Yes. Oh, is that a, is, Daniel, is this like a white, a white noise? For babies. And for uh, yeah, I think I need, I think I need that. Or maybe like the womb heartbeat sound. I don't know. Is it too late? Am I too old for that? Probably. Uh, That's okay. I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> just it's put so you in the back right? seat of a car, Elizabeth, and drive you around. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would absolutely fall asleep. Unless so my, you're a bad driver, then I would not. My daughter uses the hatch. Do you know this one? The patch. Hatch. H-A-T-C-H. No. -H. Oh, no. What's that? It's a sound machine. Okay. And okay. she loves it. Okay. I'll have to look into that for real. I should have looked at that when I was shopping on Amazon for power wash. Because <laughs> I'm thinking of like, oh, we're having the, my granddaughter's birthday party here at my house. I need to power wash some stuff. So let me just order a power washer, pressure washer thing. Yeah. Well, just leave the power washer on outside your bedroom window. You're covered. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's it. <laughs> All right. See? Yes. You know, you, know you can rent them, by the way. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> a lot of work. What if I break it? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just bought a cheap one. Anyway, I'm sorry for the digression. I appreciate you all being on my insomnia journey with me. I'll let you know how it works. Thanks, Matt, for the link, by the way. Sure. Um, okay, so I put this on here. I just want to update everybody. Uh, I don't think Georg is on here. No, he's not here today. Um, so there have been some updates to our code of conduct team. We have some new members on the team since uh, the previous ones had been on there quite a while. Um, so the new members, I can put them here, I guess. I should maybe list them. Are Georg Link, Mary Blessing, and Anita. Oops. Um, and then I um, ha have also been, so there are regular meetings now with this team. We've had one, we will have another soon, next week, I think. And I've been attending just as on behalf of the community, just to kind of be in the loop and also help them with any administrative stuff that they might need, setting up calendar, like whatever they need, just kind of talking it out with them. Um, we The board approved code of conduct training. Oh, so I should say the board voted on these folks. Um, that's how they were nominated. The board voted for them. So that's why they're there. Um, the board also approved uh, some code of conduct enforcement training with Otter Tech, which is the the probably the the premier um, training company for this, in, especially in the tech space. Um, that we had five slots: uh, Georg, Anita, and myself. Did just literally at like right before this meeting ended, just finished ours this morning. It's four hour training, um, and then I think Ruth is also taking the training and then Mary Blessing will take it later as well. So it, it was fantastic. A plus recommend for anyone who does anything within the community, even if you're not the person to enforce a code of conduct, just being able to have conversations and um, have chats about things that are blatant or maybe not blatant, things that are happening in the community. I A plus 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 recommend that or anybody who's working in the community. It was fantastic. And Sage um, is so knowledgeable about, about everything, all of the gray areas, which there are a lot of them because people are involved, <laughs> as we know. So um, Sage is fantastic. And we did some role playing as well, which um, one of the suggestions was, uh, so you, you, we were playing like, okay, I'm a responder. Um, I, I'm now the one person who's been reported doing something that is not inappropriate so we had to like play that role and there's like things you're supposed to say as and i'm like i'm not saying any of those <laughs> the terrible awful things that i'm not going to say but um it was really interesting and very very helpful 
And Sage did say, if we have anybody in our community that is uh, was a theater major, maybe likes to argue, wants to kind of play that devil's advocate kind of role and help our code of conduct team just have some practice in, in kind of handling those, that would be a great way for them, <laughs> for them to contribute to the community in kind of an untraditional way. So um, I don't know if we have anybody that fits that role that wants to be that devil's advocate pushback. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a weird place to be like it's a weird thing to but you know you can channel your inner yeah person, i guess yeah i would have a hard time channeling my inner terrible right. person right <laughs> even right. for pretend honestly i'm like i can't do this <laughs> like i'm not i'm not gonna say these things sorry um but no it was great it was really great so yeah a plus recommend and then um the last thing i just wanted to mention was that the contributor covenant which is what our chaos code of conduct um, is based on loosely, well, maybe more than loosely, we have altered it a little to fit our needs. Um, there is a new version that's being worked on. Uh, Georg and Mary Blessing and myself are gonna be attending that meeting with Coraline uh, next Monday. So we will just kind of be aware of what's, how that conversation is going, what, like just what the, the thinking is around code of conducts in general. Um, cause you know, we're evolving as a, as an industry on how we approach things and how we think about things. So, um, we will be taking any of those learnings back to, um, the board. If, if we see that there are things that maybe we want to change in our own code of conduct, just okay. to, just to evolve. Um, yeah, but that's like in the future, like we, we, we wouldn't okay. do that right away. I don't think so. Okay. I know that one of the priorities for the new code of conduct team is to improve the reporting mechanism, because that is pretty broken right now. Um, it, I understand it, it's a spam folder, basically. Super spammy. So it's really not great. So we'll be working. I'll be, I'll be helping work on that with them to, to make a better way to report any incidents. Um, and I, I should also uh, just say, there, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, you finish your sentence because it might be the same as I'm going to say. Okay. I was just going to say there, there's no... Uh, just in case people are curious, there's nothing that is um, spurring this. Uh, this is just uh, something that has been kind of an ongoing for a while. Um, we've been wanting to do this code of conduct training for, uh, I think, like a year and a half. So it's not like we had something happen in the community that's causing all of this work. It's just something that's been on our on our minds and we're just we're doing it. So that's why. I was just going to say that, too. Yay. Great minds think alike, or yeah, sorry, Matt. <laughs> if you're thinking like me, then <laughs> apologies. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments? Anything I can? No, I'm glad this is moving forward. Yeah, me too, me too. Uh, okay, the next one on our list is the badging updates. So somebody just put that there. I'm not sure if there are any updates like technically to the badging, to the badging yeah. side. I know I've been seeing some that, PRs come across. Yeah, yeah, those PRs are still being reviewed. Okay. As Ruth, yeah. do you, Ruth might have a detailed update. Yeah, I was just going to say almost the last thing because like for the event badging, someone's already like working on the integrating it to the because Lamy's done with the um with the page like design so like the development is ongoing i think yeah some pairs like the sean said have been coming through okay so it is most of the development work right now around event badging mm, no not just event badging like even okay. for the self-hosted one like that page is also like okay. being, like there are a lot of pairs like that are coming through last week we had like the, the Chaos Africa developer meeting. So a couple of people are you know, have shown interest in uh, picking up some of those issues that okay. uh, in the, yeah. Um, how are, do you have a sense of how you're feeling like from a maintenance perspective on the PRs coming in and any new issues? Like just if there's new participants who want to contribute, how you're yeah. feeling there? Yeah, we have new people that have um like some new contributors. Um and not the like the usual people, not just the usual people that have been working on it. So yeah. Um so yeah, we're trying to also revive like 
the the Rupa group and introduce like more people into because I th I think the the major issue I think we faced was like since we had like um it seemed worth on it initially right just transitioning it back to the communities so it's been challenging but like yeah. that call that we I was going to I you know give like an explanation I also did an explanation of the project and like you know where it's going what's needed to um it's going to progress okay better. All right, cool. Um, okay, that's great. And then and, uh, on the on the project badging, Enoch's just continuing to do testing. Okay, just like on edge cases, that kind of testing. Just I think we need more people to do the badging just to make sure everything's working. Okay. Um, right now, I just went to test it, and the logins are giving me a five hundred errors. Oh, now it's working. Good job. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have a quick question, and maybe um, I don't know if Daniel, you might have an answer to this. I'm wondering about the Drupal project. Um, I know they had come around to some of these meetings and had been on Slack, but I haven't seen a badge from them yet. Has has do, does anyone know if they've submitted anything? Should we reach out to them and just make sure that they? Because I think they have their DEI.md file ready to go, but. I thought I'll double check on that one, but I thought that they were still kind of getting approval from their group overall about that. Okay. Um, okay. But I can check in and see, not to like rush them, but just to see, making sure everything's going okay and if they need any support or help. Um, but I know uh, Drupal, Calmena, and uh, the Good Docs were all in process, but just um, weren't entirely ready to submit when we were kind of making the launch. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure that they knew they could if they whenever they're ready that it's open. So awesome. Thanks, Daniel. And then you I, had a question. I, I think. did. Yes. Um, I was just looking at the, um, the database table on the site. Um, I'm wondering if maybe, it, and let me just link that in um, here to make it easier, but I see like we have four projects badged. Is it going to get difficult to like see what these projects are just based on the repository names? Because I feel like um, it's going to get tricky to like read those URLs and know who the project is rather than like, maybe an extra column where we say what the project is by name, like Chaos, GitLab, Cali Linux, Epiverse. Like, um, I just feel like as this list grows, it's going to be harder to like scan through and see the projects and recognize what the project actually is. If anyone has this the I same think that's, thought or not. That's that's a good idea from a design perspective. I think mm -hmm. uh it would probably be a just project name would be what the field we would ask for that we're not presently asking for, I think. Yeah, and I don't know I've, it's like the self-hosted form would be pretty easy to like ask for what you want that name to display. The automated system maybe it would have to either we're pulling from a group or we're pulling or maybe we're again asking like to, you know i don't know how that would work as far as pulling that information from the um the api but i don't want to make it more difficult especially i know enoch's still working on some things there but um i think as a future iteration it would definitely be helpful with, without making it too challenging so the if we pull it from the api basically it would be uh like if I look at the ones that are there, the orgs kind of almost do it. Right. Um, but for example, if GitLab wants to be known as GitLab and not GitLab-org, then providing a way for it to perhaps be a piece of the DEI.md file itself, give the That's projects point, yeah. whatever name they want, that would be a change to the file that would probably take longer. I mean, we could also just ask for it in the application when we ask for the link to the DEI.md file. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, like a new, uh, when you're doing that automated application, just a new box to fill out, what would you yeah. want the name to be displayed as? Yep. Uh, that would I probably just be the easiest. Yeah, just somebody, I can, I'm not exactly sure where to open an issue for that. But that's probably what to do. Just in badging. 
Badging, badging. Badging, badging. Okay. I'll open an issue. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Quick question on the badging, just noting the four projects that you have noted. It is for a project, not for an entire entity. Am I correct in understanding that? Just because you were talking about adding a column that said GitLab or chaos on the side, just because an organization has a project that has achieved a badge, it doesn't mean that the organization itself has the badge. Particularly if that organization has multiple projects in it, because right. naturally they can be designed a little bit differently. Like we have the chaos org and we kind of treat it as a single project. But to your point, it could be one org. So we kind of leave it up to the applicants to make that decision as to how, how they're structured, because we can't always know that. Well, I'm just curious because I'm trying to promote that internally. And we have lots and lots of repos that are open source. However, I don't know that all of them are amenable to doing a full on chaos badge just because some of them might just be APIs to another product and the lift associated with creating all of these artifacts for a relatively small thing is yeah not necessarily germane to that project. So, However, a larger project or where I'm trying to focus on are larger projects that are much more comprehensive and really a more full featured, almost open source product, if you will, not just. Dan, this is hand up. Um, yeah, I, I just, for what we did for GitLab was kind of similar. And what we did is treating it as the organizational level for the badge and the DEIMD file. And then within the file, if there's anything specific to particular projects under the organizations, sort of noting those for a particular project. That way, because we have so many projects, so many repositories, not requiring hundreds of different DEI.MD files, but just having uh -huh. like one centralized document and then saying, hey, for this particular project, noting something, um, just to sort of have a central, like single source of truth, but also making it clear if there's any differences between projects. That's a great idea. Thanks for sharing that, Daniel. I might go crib from your site. <laughs> and, and there really weren't a lot of differences for us. Like it's mostly central, but we do have gitlab.org and gitlab.com. And there's just a couple little differences I noted in there. But, um, and I think for what we've been telling our open source partners is, that they can use a single one or they can go specific to their projects, really up to them. Awesome, thank you, Daniel. And that was a great question, Rhea. Any other questions, comments, discussion about badging? Rhea, I just put the link to the DEI.md file that Daniel was referring to in the chat might be helpful. Fantastic, thank you. Yep. Yeah, about another conversation, I just want to like bring this back up again, Um, the review that we had. So I don't know, I would want to open up an issue. Um, So we collect that into a doc or Matt, do you want to still do that? So like maybe we can discuss it. The review that we had, I'm what trying to... The feedback that we got yeah. from the LF about event badging? No. Oh, yeah, no, I still haven't done that. I was out for a while. I know what you're talking about. Sorry. Yeah. I also wonder um, if we should have a place for some examples for people who are looking like this just made me think of like Rhea is looking for a good example that kind of fits her uh her situation and then here's daniel like oh here's ours so i wonder if there's a place on our site where we should or could have some examples for people who are just seeing want to see what other people are doing how other people are handling it maybe what they have in their in their dei.md file for ideas as well of like what they could do in their communities 
not just for the DEI file and badging, but actual processes and policies that other projects have in place. We, we could, and in fact, that might be a way to say, um, like if you're an org with multiple repositories, but your org constitutes your project, maybe think about the DEI.mb file this way. If you're an org with multiple projects, here's another way to think about the DEI. Is that kind of where you're going? That and also, um, so say I'm a project and I'm like, I, I want to make our new newcomer experience better, but I don't know what else I can do. Can I look at some other projects that are that have really great or have a lot going on in their newcomer experience section. So I could get some ideas that I could maybe implement in mine. We would. Um, I mean, it would have to be like a curated list, I think. Yeah, it would. Um, I'm wondering if, honestly, like after a little bit of time, we could write a blog post to oh, highlight that's this. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just because I know originally when this came around way, 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 way back when that was kind of one of the goals we wanted was to give projects a way to not only um, signal and communicate what they're thinking, how they're thinking about these things, but also share ideas with other projects so that yeah. other projects could implement more things as well. Yeah, and obviously they can go like if you click on that badged projects, they can go look. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to kind of find. But then you have to find like the specific thing that you want. Yeah. So we're talking about, say, newcomer experience. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Or just like, like surface these a little bit better. Like, so I wouldn't have to go, oh, here it is. You know what I mean? Like, oh, here's a tab with just some examples or some, some highlighted, I don't know, best practices or something like people who have really put, you know, a lot. Like I would probably say GitLab is one of them because <laughs> there's there's just they've thought about this a lot and you know like this I think would be super helpful for other projects maybe they wouldn't be able to implement all of these things but you know like they might get some ideas of things that they could also do in their projects. Right. I would suggest we start with maybe a blog post where we just think about what has worked well. Yeah. Or what others are doing, just some yeah, ideas. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Or like, maybe not work well, but what others are doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Or maybe interesting ideas for the yeah. metrics. And then also, um, maybe we can have a tab for example. Of how the DEI.md uh, applies to various boards and projects. Yeah. And I'm maybe, again, that one, maybe a blog post is best. I, I love the simplicity of the site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to navigate. And then we could just add an FAQ of like, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this applies to my org or project or what. And then we can just point to the blog post. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would, something simpler. That's smart. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then do you have any update on the event badging changes? I know we were talking about that. Yeah. So you mean the one question about the demographics or mm -hmm. the new metrics? Yes. No, okay. the demographics. I have not implemented that yet okay. in our current application, but I should do that because I think that's an easy thing to change. And I don't think I have to wait for the new site to make that change. Okay, no, I don't think so either. And did, yeah. were you able to talk about that in the metrics meeting? I wasn't there last week because I know we were going to suggest some changes maybe. Yes. Yes, we, we did talk about it. I don't remember what we said. It was Thursday. It was almost a week ago. So you know, we did discuss it. We did discuss it. I and can I, confirm it was discussed. Okay. I feel like we did confirm that we should change how we ask that. Okay. <laughs> That's what minutes are for, right? Yeah, I know. Okay, fine. Yeah. No, there was no, a lot no. of clarifying what our action items were in that meeting, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I tell you what, Matt, I will investigate that. <laughs> There'll be a full SVU on this one. All right. <laughs> Yes, for sure. Because I'm with you. It didn't seem like it was a big change. 
and maybe just some nudging in the metric and just a little nudging in the application process. Yeah, yeah. I know that the application files we have now on the website are kind of, it's kind of janky the way that that's put together. So I need to go back and pull out all those okay. comments and docs from Matt Cantu okay. <laughs> who documented the process for me, but it's not easy. So I, I will, yeah, I'll figure okay. it out. Fair enough, right on, thank you. Yeah, 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 no worries. Thanks for bringing that up. Okay, anything else about badging before we move on to our disability inclusion and mainstreaming? All good, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right, who put this on here and would like to talk about it? I think okay, Bruce. That's me. Yeah, um, Brian's unable to make it here, so I'm just going to talk about this. Um, so for context, um, this year we've kind of also been focusing on enabling mm -hmm. access and you know improving access for um in Chaos Africa for um differently abled folks um you know that attend our conferences and also outreach to those people to be able to be part of the open source community and kind of how this originated was because we have um someone um some people that are differently abled in Chaos Africa and also people that are also interested in contributing and helping um, differently um, abled folks. So the team is composed of like four people, myself, um, uh, Brian, Winifred, and um, uh, Victoria for now. Um, and we have kind of been thinking about um, first an outreach on like, Reaching out, pe reaching out to people that are interested in tech, um, but they are like, you know, they have like, um, some difficulties with assessing the open source community, right? Um, so, um, they've been meeting and like, we were looking out to doing an outreach this um quarter, um, you know, to those folks, and um, I think we're still looking for communities to you know partner with, and I, I think um. There have been some there have been some recommendations from Victoria as well. Um, I wasn't the last meeting, so I'm just giving like an overview. Um, and then I think the second thing is since we're going to be participating in Pico Namibia, there's also some potential to, uh, sponsor some tickets to for people um, gain access to the events that are not able to attend and, uh, maybe bringing them to the event as well. Um, so that's kind of like the summary of the, um project um but we haven't um, settled on anything yet um mostly outreach and then i'm um, trying to um, improve access in our conferences like for example chaos con africa and even like with conferences that kind of pushing that work towards like open source conferences as well that happen here in africa um and starting that, that conversation so that's um kind of what this whole um group is doing um and i think there's also potential for us to bring back feedback to this um meeting and like things that we notice even um not just be not just location based um challenges but like i think those challenges will also kind of affect like globally and how we can think about that so um yeah that's the overview of um that group and um I think Brian would have done a better job with the updates, but <laughs> that's the overview. And um, Brian will keep giving updates in the next meeting. I, I think that's a really great initiative, and I look forward to hearing what comes from that, Ruth. Thank you, Sean. Yes, thank you, um, Ruth. I personally am most interested, I mean, I'm interested in all of it, obviously, but I am also very interested in this of how we can be better in chaos um, to cater or to accommodate uh, folks who need a little bit more accommodation than we are providing currently. So yes, any suggestions that you all have? Um, I also would just, I don't, I don't know if um, there's an accessibility expert at GitHub, Ruth, do you, I don't know if you remember his name, he might, he might be a person to put on your list if he's not already. Yeah, I think I, I met with Kamli recently and she, she talked about their coding accessibility thingy, but I don't know the exact person there, maybe we can 
you may recommend you should. Yeah, I I know I've I've had a conversation with him in the past. I just don't remember his name off the top of my head, so I will look for that. I'll, I'll connect you. Yep. Sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, maybe just adding here as well. Um, maybe for Daniel, if there are any things that um. Um, GitLab is also looking to do. Um, I know some of the funds um from the sponsorship we're going to channel it here. So if there are any like alignments or anything, you can also like do let me know. I have one actually still getting the details on it, but um we're partnering up with Coding Black Females organization and we're looking to put together an event, um, like a virtual remote event, um, especially mm -hmm. for their students coming out of the boot camp. Um, and I think we're going to be looking for speakers. So if anyone from Chaos Africa would be interested oh, in being a speaker um, and talking about the process of you know, getting into open, using open source and getting into a career through open source contributions, something like along those lines, um, I think it would be a cool opportunity to partner up on if, if we could make that work. Yeah, yeah, sure. That that would be interesting. I think maybe if you could send me like a DM with the details when you have like, we have uh, a lot of people that are, um, you know, doing a lot of like work around that so yes definitely Great. thanks yeah i can dm you okay thank you i feel the synergy coming to me i love it i love it so <laughs> much <laughs> um no for real thank you ruth for um for sharing those wonderful updates you did brian well we will we will all attest any other questions, comments for Ruth? Okay. Um, this looks interesting. I'm not sure who put this on here, but I would love to hear about it. It's me again. Ah, Ruth. Love it. Very. Um. So I. I. I think some weeks ago, a month ago, I got to reach out from the people building this. Um and they kind of like did um explained what the project is about. Uh, I think it kind of um a little bit really it relates to the no code co like not exactly but kind of like recognizing contributors, um, and also like um just automating that process as well. I know we've had a couple of that conversation in the past. So um they shared this. I have not tried it myself. Um and I don't think I don't know if they have a demo to watch. Um, but like I think it's something that could be in our radar on like, you know. Where did you hear about this, Ruth? So the the person that built it, I think like the founder also reached out to me on LinkedIn. Then okay. I had like um this looks kind of interesting. Maybe we'll check that out. Do a little more research on it. Looks pretty cool. Especially I like the automation part of it. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Anything that can automate. Right. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Amen. Do that. Yeah, very cool. Thanks, Ruth. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll just take the action item to look more into it and how kind kind of how it works. Maybe I'll bring it back to the group and say, okay, these are the things right now. Yeah. I haven't tried it. So that'd be great. And I'm guessing nobody else on the call has had any experience with it. Since no, no one else is Chiming in, like, hey, this is awesome. No, I haven't seen it. Okay. Thanks, Ruth. Uh, that does remind me, there was uh, this from last time that I just ended up deleting because I was like, yeah. So uh, I'll just bring it up here. So we've been doing this experiment with the uh, community contributions.md and um, it's working pretty well. I will show you all what it looks like so far. Uh, a few people are are doing are doing it. Not everybody, but a few people are. I appreciate those who are um, submitting their pull requests. Let me find the community. Where's community? 
There it is. There right oh, we go. Um, so this is what it looks like. So uh, for those who don't know what this is, we're trying to find a way to capture and recognize and give credit to contributions that don't show up in a PR somewhere. So these are mostly not code related, um, but are other things like community management, project management, user interface, that kind of stuff. So um, we, but, but submitting a PR for your contribution gives you a square on your GitHub graph and it let, lets you point to something uh, for external validation or requirements. Um, this kind of came up from a Google Summer of Code where there was nothing to really point to and this person had been contributing to chaos for quite a while in a in a non PR type capacity so there really wasn't anything for them to show which is a shame because they were a huge contributor. So that kind of spawned, and this has been on my mind for a really long time so we're trying this to see what what happens, the only. Um, thing i've noticed is that we have had some merge conflicts because it's all going in one doc we kind of figured this would happen, um, but i'm wondering if. To admit like I can I can manually fix them it's not a big deal it's not like I have thousands to fix. But I'm wondering if we should break this up and give everybody their own section. I wanted to bring that to the script just to see what y'all thought. So like I would have my own section of this doc and every time I have a, a contribution, I could submit a PR in my section that would not affect um, by Daniel would not affect anybody else's contributions it wouldn't overwrite anything it wouldn't merge conflict with anything. But also that could get pretty big. So I'm not so sure. If you're, if you're a first time person, you'd have to just create your own section mm -hmm. and then subsequently add. It's yeah. just two steps for the first time and then everything else would just be one step. Yeah. I don't know how this would tie into Sean put something about GitHub Actions. Yeah, the and, one of the GitHub people and I talked about how to create a GitHub Action for people to create issues to get stuff automatically populated. So that would, would at least keep this that would at least keep this PRs. So they would create PRs, but the PRs at least would be sequential. So if you merged them in order, there yeah. shouldn't be conflicts. That would that would work as well. That would, that would, sounds yeah. like that would solve the problem. Yeah. Yeah. You're always still gonna have to merge them in the order they were created in. But uh it's easier. Yeah, and the other thing too is I'm thinking like so if I wanted to show someone all my contributions, I would just have to point them to this doc, which is like, oh, here I am, here I am, here I am. Like they're, they're not really, um, like Mary Blessing submitted a bunch at once. Yeah. So hers are together, but like in theory, you could just submit one at a time. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be a, a lump. Yeah. So that was the other kind of reasoning from my thought around creating a section for every contributor. On the flip side, devil's advocating myself, I would not be able to, as a community manager, easily pull the types of contributions. Like I could export this table or copy and paste it and then sort like how That's many, what I was thinking. you know, how many contributions are we getting around accessibility, for instance, versus project management. Um, and I would be, then also be able to sort by person too, but. It seems like the first best action might be to use GitHub Actions to just order the PRs to avoid that conflict issue you were talking about. So that would solve that. And then if somebody really wanted to see all of their contributions, so for example, like if Yiga did some additional co contributions later, you may have to do what you just said, at least for now, like yeah. export it out and then just filter on your own contributions. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I will say I, li I like I like this because it is nice to see like the work that you guys doing and Mary Blessing like have have a place to be put. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I, I want to encourage more folks to to add yeah. their contributions here. So I like that. And then I I figured this out. I'm so proud of myself. There's a little a little arrow. Yeah. Oh. Markdown, right? Oh. Yeah, I know. Oh. I'm pretty rad. Uh, you're getting pretty internet fancy here. <laughs> yeah. 
I just know. do it all day just because I'm like, that's <laughs> yeah, <so> stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things. I was so proud of myself when I figured that out. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I think I probably took the rest of the day off that day. I don't know. Huh. Oh, it's understandable. <laughs> uh yeah okay mm -hmm. so i'm gonna just po put down here actually i'm sean to follow up oh, sean and isaac i will put yeah with the github action is the merge conflict uh, okay con cool conflicts Sitch? Yeah, a situation. Oh. Yeah. The cool people say sitch, Matt. Come on. It's the merge conflict sitch. Yeah. Can you tell I'm a little punchy? I have not had sleep. <laughs> got a lot of coffee. Can't yeah. tell. Can't tell. Okay. Uh, we have six minutes. We're good. And, yeah. We can chat about something else or we can just all go home. You can go know. take a quick nap. Yeah, power <laughs> power <laughs> nap. Yeah. Man, it's rough. I also started my MBA classes this week, so I'm kind of like, oh, there's a lot. A lot going on, a lot of moving parts. <laughs> yeah. It's good though. I love it. I love it. It's good. Right on. Uh okay. Well, yeah, I'm taking that five minutes back, y'all. And Thanks, I will everyone. see you all next week. Thanks for coming, everybody. Great to see Thank you. Thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.